I'm going to try to do justice because I listen to your show and you have such amazing intros that I don't want to, I don't want to let it down, but everybody, (laughs) I'm on the line right now with somebody you're very familiar with in the wrestling world. She is a WWE ring announcer, uh, podcast host, uh, wrestling personality. I could go on and on and on, but she has some big news this week. She is taking her Chasing Glory show to WWE Network. Lillian Garcia, how are you today? Hey, I'm doing good, Bill. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate your time. Big announcement this week. Chasing Glory is going to be on WWE Network starting this Monday, October 26th. Yep. Fans can tune in to the free version of the WWE Network uh, every morning starting at 10 a.m. So... What made this the right move? How did it happen? What are your thoughts finally getting a chance to let people in on what's going on? Yeah, sure. Well, you know, I've had the podcast since 2016. We did change the name to Chasing Glory in 2017. And it's been a wild ride, incredible stories. Uh, it's just been uh, really a labor of love for me, and especially the uh, the caliber of stories that are coming out. And how we do touch on mental health and the struggles that people go through and making it where people just don't feel so alone in the world and that they're the only ones going through something. So uh, we did take a break this year, which was wild because the timing of it all was, you know, when everything was going crazy with COVID and then uh, the Black Lives Matter movement started and just, uh, it just seemed like the right time after I did that episode to just take a break, pause, pay attention, do more listening. And it really did work out in the end. Uh, We were trying to figure out when to come back. And then we decided, okay, we're going to come back in the fall and treat this like a season and a season premiere. And it was right when we decided, all right, we're coming back in the fall that I got an email from the WWE asking me, hey, would you consider putting this on the network? And it just seems so perfect, so fitting, because I do majority of the interviews that I do have are the superstars. And the fact that it was on their free version was exciting to me as well, uh, because I've always made the show very free and accessible to anybody. And so that really just seemed like the perfect scenario of putting that on there and the fact that you can still download it wherever you get your podcast so if you are an audio listener you can still go on mondays and uh and we wanted to keep it on mondays it's been on mondays since the you know since it kicked off in 2016 and that was my home for so many years on monday night raw that here we are anybody wants to check it out to avoid confusion i guess the video show is going to be on wwe network you can still listen to it wherever you get your podcasts it's the Chasing Glory app, Apple, Spotify, Google, iHeartRadio, pretty much anywhere you listen to a podcast, you can get it. So you're still going to be able to listen where you want. It's just now you get the video show. Instead of just watching on YouTube, it's going to be on WWE Network. So right. you know, you're, you're going to have a bigger audience in a way. Yeah, I'm excited about that. There's a lot of people that have definitely followed the show. We have over 7 million downloads, which has been incredible. Uh, It's a testament to the fans really resonating with what's going on. Um, But it is going to open it up to a lot of people that just didn't even know about the show because there's just so much content out there. So I love that. I love that they're going to be able to hear the stories from their favorite superstars and be like, whoa, I had no idea. And look, Monday's, you know, the episode Monday with Braun Strowman, which we broke the news, you know, announcing every Friday, we like to, to announce it uh, with Glory Friday on at Chasing Glory on Instagram. And so we broke the news that Braun Strowman is kicking this all off. And I watched his chronicle on the network, had so many more questions uh, from that. It was so good, so uh, just so empowering and uh, things that he'd never talked about before. And so he opens up even more. We go even further and deeper in this episode. And yeah, there was a couple things that he actually shared. They're like, I never, you know, I've said this before and I never thought that I was going to. And so I think that people at the end of that episode on Monday with Braun Strowman are going to be like, whoa, I love this guy even more. How much of a role does the the character or the person play in selecting a guest? Because I'll at least say from personal experience, yeah, you do the promotional stuff, but then the more exciting conversations are the ones where you want to know something more about that person. 
specifically. And then you try to find a way that your audience can relate to it. So like, why was, for instance, why was Braun the right person for the first show? And then how did you really build up your, your guest list for what you're planning to do for future weeks? Well, first of all, the guest list, not easy, especially because we were just focusing on the 10 that are from now to the end of the year. I made a trip and already I got five that are in the can. And so it was hard to determine because so many people have such great stories. But at the end of the day, like I really follow my gut. I've done that since the, you know, beginning of this whole ride in 2016. And it just seems to have worked the timing of some of the superstars and when they have dropped uh, the episode. And Braun, when I watched his Chronicle, I just told WWE, if we're gonna do this, this is great. And I really think that we should kick it off with Braun. I mean, his Chronicle was really part of that whole Chasing Glory story. And I said, I've got to dive in deeper. And he's perfect, he's really great. I mean, I just couldn't be happier with the episode and how it's turned out. I can't wait for everybody to see it. We put a lot of hours into this too. So it's very, um, just when you watch the episode, you feel like you're not just watching a, a regular podcast, like it's a show. And there's just a lot of footage that we include in there too. So it takes you back. And uh, yeah, I, this, this season's going to be awesome. Um, I can't tell you again who else is coming on here, but Let's just say their stories, and some of them I've had on the show before, and I just felt it's important to continue sharing their chasing glory story and, and watching people evolve. I think that's really interesting. I won't ask to tease, but I will say go ahead and follow every Friday to get your answer. That's how yeah. you find out. There you go. So uh, one of the more interesting things that I think they're doing with this as a whole is it's being referred to as the conversation series of yeah. shows on WWE network. And it's very fitting because at least in terms of watching a podcast or watching a vlog and the news cycle, like pull quotes and all that, like it, it's very, and I mean this in a, in a positive way, it's very hard to watch your show and do that because you think like, okay, I'm, I'm watching a clip from the YouTube channel. And mm -hmm. you're like, oh yeah, that's really interesting. But then like, I often find myself watching the entire episode. So it's like, <laughs> I do like, I'm a big fan of the show, but thank you. How do you structure the show where it's, you know, you, you can do that because you know that there's the, dis the, the YouTube audience or the, the Twitter audience where you can only put up so much of it mm -hmm. where you're, you're getting a full thought in context of social media, but then you can also introduce it in the, in the long form. Well, first of all, I mean, I never think about, let's go into this episode to see which, you know, clips or what bites that I can get for social media, let's say. Well, uh, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll interrupt and say, I mean, in, in context of post-production, not pre-production. Yeah, it's not easy finding those clips, to be honest with you. I mean, we really do, like that's what I said, my team. I can't do this without my team. Big shout out to my team. Um, you know, we really do dive in every week and it's hours and hours and hours into like an hour or an hour and a half episode. Um, but we do that on purpose because we know how important the show is. And especially because we go in so deep and have these deeper conversations um, and we take good care of, of that. And because the superstars are also entrusting the show with their heartfelt stories and their never before shared stories, that's huge. So when we do the episode, uh, for example, when I was rewatching Braun's episode, uh, there's a clip that we're going to be showing this week. And we're, we used to show like three clips in the week. And then I was like, you know what? We're giving away the episode too much. Like really people need to just dive in and just watch it for themselves. It's like seeing a movie trailer that shows you too much. And you know, I don't want to do that. I want to just let people get a taste of it and then be like so intrigued that they're like, I got to check this out. So when there was a specific clip that we will be showing uh, next week that really stood out to me and it showed the kind of person that Braun Strowman is. And that's how we pick those clips is what really speaks that in that two minute or minute and a half, people can be like, 
wow, this really sounds like it's going to be touching and meaningful and something that I need to have in my life. Do you have a favorite story out of, if you can narrow it down or I'm putting you on the spot, do you have a favorite story of any of your shows that have aired so far? Favorite story. Wow. Um, I, I mean, I think that that's a little unfair in a way to judge one episode over the other. I think that every single episode I have literally, like once the episode is done and the interview is done, I sit back and I'm like, wow what just got shared here, what just happened, because I know like a hundred percent based on all the response I've already received that somebody out there in the world, it's going to resonate with them and it's going to change their life. And because of that, I'm always in awe of everything that does get shared. And it's just, I I don't take that lightly. I mean, like I said, this show is something that really just to the core it is in my blood, it is in my soul to just spread positivity to the world and let people know that it's okay what you're going through and you are not alone. So really, I just want to commend every single, you know, whether it's a superstar, or whether it's an athlete, entertainer, a entrepreneur that has been on the show already and the ones that are coming up that what they have shared because they're changing the world. They really are. And I think what resonates the most about your show is you can go in and there is a topic and one that really stands out is uh, the the JTG episode. He spoke mm. about Shad Gas- Gaspard and, yeah. you know, like that is a topic that might not really, I mean, I think at, a lot of people can understand loss, but then again, a lot of people might not. Like maybe they didn't lose anybody that close to them in their life yet. Right. But you also, you know, going in, like that's what you're going to be hearing about, but then you might take something that you never expected from another episode. Like uh, Melina's episode was another one of the recent ones before your hiatus. And she Mm -hmm. talks about living with depression. Right. And how, I mean, that's a very relatable thing where, you might not think it it does, but you might find something and it's it's like just a small little detail that, you know, speaks to you, whether it's her speaking as a WWE personality or just as a woman or as a person with depression. Like, I think just the the, the experience of watching it, I think, makes people more comfortable talking about these serious topics. And right circling back to what I kind of alluded to at the beginning, I think, you know, having this on WWE network is going to give more exposure to have more people be comfortable with their lives and what they're going through. Well, that's exactly what we, you know, at the very beginning of the show, you asked me why the WWE network too. And it's because I want this to be seen by as many eyes as possible and not about me. I'm just the vehicle to get these stories out there. That's it. This show is so much bigger than me and what is being shared. And you, you said it, Melina talking about depression to the point where she wanted to commit suicide. There's a lot of people that are going through that. And especially now, I just saw a statistic the other day that blew me away. 60 men per hour are committing suicide around the world. 60 men per hour. That just, it just, it impacted me in the way that I'm like, wait, what did you just say? I had to let that absorb because it is a problem. And they were committing suicide for all sorts of different reasons, right? Whether it's because of depression, whether it is because you don't feel good enough, because it is of, you know, I suffered with bulimia for years and I shared that in the story or whatever it is that you're going through, alcoholism, drug addiction. You know, I, I think it's, it's a very important and this has given it permission that we can all talk about what it is that you're going through and how somebody like a superstar got through it. And then the listener can listen to that and go, I can apply that into my life. And if that person went through that and got through it and became a superstar, I can do that. And that's what the show is all about. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important to look at it and say, how can I apply this to my life? If I think I see something similar going on, 
yeah. no matter what it is, how can I apply it to my life and how can I, how can I better myself? So right. I, I, I encourage, like I said, I'm a fan of the show. I encourage people to tune in on Monday. You've been away for a few months, but you know, it, it's exciting to have it back because, uh, you know, it's going to help people, but, but on a lighter note, you're one of the few people in wrestling that actually got an off season. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's so now funny. that you had yeah. your time away, it's, you know, back to yep. work, you're, you're here back to work. <laughs> um, are you, how far, how close do you follow like the TV product now? Yeah, like, no, no. I mean, I definitely every watch. week. So yeah. I'm, I'm definitely been, you know, watching. I did step away for a moment. I had to take care of my own mental health. I was so exhausted and mentally exhausted as well with everything that was going on with COVID. And then my mom, she's in assisted living and not being able to see her for three months. Um, when finally I told the assisted living place, I have to see my mother. I, in my mom's like, please get me out of here. Like I will take my chances during COVID and, and realize like, she goes, I'd rather live because just living in a room isolated and trying to keep myself protected from COVID, I'm already dead. And when she said that, I'm like, whoa, okay, mom, if you're, if you want to do that. And it's been wonderful. I've been, you know, very careful with her, but we have been having more outings. And so I took that time to spend more time with her. I took the time to spend with my husband to recharge the batteries. And I am so grateful that I did. And I think that that's why I wanted to share it too, is because it was the perfect thing to do. And then look, now it's making the season premiere even bigger and the fact that WWE came right at this time, I don't think there's any coincidences. It was supposed to have taken a break so we could then come back even bigger. Yeah. And, and I'm fresher. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, you're, I mean, you're used to being part of a touring brand for years and years. And yeah. this changes it for a lot of people. But um, I'll, I'll close on this on a, a lighter note. Uh, Favorite match you've ever been a part of, whether it was a storyline or you were just present for it. Oh like my you on God. the spot again. It's so funny. People ask me that all the time. And it's like, I mean, full time fifteen year career there. It's hard to to really pinpoint a favorite match. Um, but I I do know that anytime WrestleMania was around and you would look around to all the fans, and it was the, you know, one time a year. Uh, during my time, because at the time they didn't have, like, I couldn't, even even overseas wasn't in a stadium at that time. But it was the one time that I could look around to 80,000 or 90,000 or over 100,000, you know, of the WWE universe coming together and being like, wow, it's just incredible, the energy. And I know that that's what the superstars are missing right now. Uh, they've told me it is so different. They're grateful for the, you know, the viral and the virtual and all of that that's going on, but there's nothing, there's nothing like the crowd and the energy. And so anytime that WrestleMania came around, it was just really special. All right. You guys can see Lillian on WWE Network Monday, October 26th, kicks off 10 a.m. Eastern time, and you can still listen uh, to the Chasing Glory podcast wherever you listen to podcasts, but tune in Monday thing too is that we were we're going to be releasing as well on youtube they're called the chasing glory speed not speed rounds so those are just on youtube and they're fun they're like five ten minute segments that are like hot seat questions hilarious so that will be something to look out for as well